dearest Leonard. I write this seated at the marble table, for which we have grown so fond over the past year. I know that you have little control over the date of your return. But I will hold on hope. I cannot count the times that I have thought of you. I may not know your physical whereabouts, but your place in my heart is sure and strong. I found myself more lonely than ever this winter. Although I know your hardships are far greater than mine. I only long to know that you're in good health and good heart. When we are reunited and alone together once more, there are certain things of great importance that I must share with you. Know that I love you, and I'm yours forever. Beatrice. Well, I don't know what she knows about what's going on in this house. It's disgraceful. Have you seen how she's been gallivanting around with that Mr. Barrett? And what with that dear husband of her off at the wharf? Such a lovely man. Absolutely appalling. He knew what was going on. It would break his heart. God only knows how that sort of woman ended up with such a lovely man as Mr. Golding. Anyway, grab that. Let's get inside. I have to say, I've been wondering why Mr. Barrett hasn't been sent off to the war anyway, Annie. I mean, a young man of his age, there's no reason I can think of. And that wounded leg, is it really as bad, Seppel's rig? Mrs. Browning, my sister won't be home for dinner tonight, so please ensure there's a cold supper in the dining room. Yes, Mum. 